The Hyper Coaster is one of the most popular coaster models to ever be created. With a minimum drop requirement of 200 feet, they focus on speed and airtime instead of inversions. Over the years, several manufacturers have tried their hand at creating hyper coasters, including B&M, Intamin, and Aerodynamics, but one manufacturer that seems to be very underrated is Morgan, or DH Morgan Manufacturing. Founded by Dana Morgan, the son of Ed Morgan who co-founded Aero Development, the company built various roller coasters between 1996 and 2004, but the most highly regarded of them are definitely their hyper coasters. During this eight-year span, Morgan created seven hypercoasters that are still in operation today, many of which are respected by enthusiasts. The question I want to ask then is why we haven't seen a Morgan hypercoaster built since then. Now some of you are probably confused, being that Morgan no longer operates as a company, as they sold all their assets to Chance Rides in the early 2000s. But hear me out on this, as I think it's still a possibility. To really set the stage though, we should take a quick look at those seven hypercoasters and what makes them so unique. Let's go in chronological order with Morgan's first hypercoaster, Wild Thing at Valley Fair. Standing 207 feet high, this coaster holds a place in history as not only Morgan's first hypercoaster, but also as a project that was personally commissioned to Dana Morgan by former Cedar Fair CEO Richard Kinzel. With a top speed of 74 miles per hour and an abundance of airtime, including a tunnel as its finale, Wild Thing is still considered by many to be the best coaster at Valley Fair. Morgan would work with Cedar Fair again the following year to design Steel Force at Pennsylvania's Dorney Park. This coaster is slightly shorter than Wild Thing, being exactly 200 feet tall, but it still manages to reach the same speed of 74 miles per hour. Featuring a helix next to Cedar Creek, Steel Force was well received by riders, but in recent years it has come under fire from some enthusiasts who claim it offers little to no airtime and does nothing with its layout. Regardless of what you think of the ride experience, it remains the tallest coaster at Dorney Park and the third tallest coaster in Pennsylvania, tied with Hershey Park's Skyrush. Next was Mamba at Worlds of Fun, opening in 1998. Mamba's layout is nearly identical to that of Steel Force, so many criticisms of Steel Force that have been said over the years might apply here as well. The common consensus, however, seems to be that the airtime on Mamba is stronger and it maintains its speed throughout the layout better than Steel Force does. Mamba does have a height of 205 feet, slightly overtaking Steel Force, although their drops are identical. There are some slight differences in the track profiling at points, but 95% of these coasters are identical to each other. The year 1999 brought us Steel Eel at SeaWorld San Antonio, although it's technically not a hyper coaster. With a height and drop of only 150 feet, it doesn't meet the criteria of hitting that 200 foot mark, although most enthusiasts just throw this one in with the rest of the Morgan Hypers anyway. Despite the shorter height, Steel Eel still has a remarkably solid layout with plenty of airtime hills throughout. It's clear this is one of the most popular coasters at this park, and it even got an excellent new paint job in 2019, so it's clear that SeaWorld plans to keep this one around for a long time. Now the year 2000 is interesting. Steel Dragon 2000 is technically considered a Giga coaster, but I'm adding it to this video since it's the only Giga coaster that Morgan ever built. It was the tallest coaster in the world when it opened with a height of 318 feet, and it still holds the record for world's longest coaster with over 8,100 feet of track. Many enthusiasts consider this a bucket list coaster, and it's easy to see why. With a sprawling layout with massive helixes and floater airtime hills that are taller than most hyper coasters, Steel Dragon 2000 has stood the test of time. Now in 2001, Morgan were hired to do something a bit different. Not a ground up coaster, but instead a renovation. Everyone knows this story by now, the aerodynamics hyper coaster Steel Phantom at Kennywood was renovated by Morgan into the airtime machine known as Phantom's Revenge. Because of Steel Phantom's unconventional layout and heavy use of terrain, Morgan were forced to break away from their previous hypercoaster designs and because of that, many consider this to be the best of the Morgan Hypers. With a second drop that's taller than the first and a second half that will get you flying up out of your seat, Phantom's Revenge is a coaster that every enthusiast should experience at least once. After Phantom, Morgan's final hypercoaster project began, Superman Ultimate Escape at Six Flags Mexico. Being that Morgan was sold to Chance Rides in 2001, the newly rebranded Chance Morgan took over the project. Superman Ultimate Escape was supposed to open in 2002, but due to a disagreement between Six Flags and the Mexican government at the time, the coaster was put on hold until eventually being completed in 2004. Being Morgan's final hyper coaster, Superman was a good coaster to go out on. The layout is similar, although not identical, to Wild Thing. It has different track profiling on both helixes and it features a short pre-lift section after exiting the station. Another great coaster added to Morgan's lineup, Superman would be their last. But hold on a minute, we're not completely done with Morgan's hypercoasters as there were a couple that were planned but never built. 
In 1999, Michigan's Adventure released preliminary plans for a Morgan Hypercoaster to be placed in the area next to their new CCI wooden coaster, Shivering Timbers. The coaster was to be a clone of Mamba, and the station and entrance would be located right next to Shivering Timber's entrance. When Cedar Fair entered into negotiations to purchase the park, the plans for the coaster were put on hold. When the purchase was finalized in 2001, the coaster was effectively cancelled. Instead, Cedar Fair put a train ride in the space intended for the coaster, pretty much blocking off that area for coaster development. A new coaster could fit in the area next to the train ride, but will they install one? Considering all of the fantastic attractions Cedar Fair have added at Michigan's Adventure in the past few years, probably not. Now here's the big one. In 1997, California's Great America, then under Paramount's ownership, were in talks with Morgan to build a 200-foot hypercoaster where the station was 100 feet off the ground and an elevator lift brought the train up the remaining 100 feet. A lot of you probably don't believe this is real, and I'll admit I didn't at first either, but this coaster was a real project that got extremely close to being built. The location for this coaster would have been right next to where Demon is today, and the track would go over Demon at certain points. The layout doesn't look extremely long, but that elevator lift would have been amazing to see in person. I'll put a link in the description to a forum thread that goes into detail on all aspects of the coaster, including potential names and themes, but this would have definitely been the strangest roller coaster Morgan had ever built. In the years since Superman opened, Chance Morgan, now known as Chance Rides, have designed a few roller coasters, but nothing close to the 200-foot mark. In 2014, Kentucky Kingdom opened Lightning Run, the first and so far only Hyper GTX coaster. Although it's only 100 feet tall, Lightning Run manages to pack a lot of airtime into a relatively small plot of land, and it's a wonder as to why more parks haven't purchased one of these coasters yet. In 2019, Chance Rides designed Nickelodeon Slime Streak for Nickelodeon Universe at American Dream, although this was just a small-scale family coaster. Now why did I ask earlier why we haven't seen a Morgan Hyper coaster since 2004? Because they're still advertised to this day on Chance Rides' website. Despite the fact that there hasn't been one built in over 15 years, the rebranded Chance Rides Hypercoaster is still available for purchase, with heights up to 300 feet. They're using Mamba here as an example, and it just blows my mind to think that this entire time new Morgan Hypers could have been built, but parks just aren't buying them. It's just like how so many people wonder why more parks haven't built Hyper GTX coasters. It seems like an obvious choice, but it just doesn't happen. So why do I think more of these haven't been built? Admittedly, a lot of parks don't have the space or the budget to add such a large coaster, and if they do have the space and money, B&M or Intamin are likely more enticing to look into, especially B&M. A B&M hypercoaster is usually an all-around crowd-pleaser and extremely reliable, so why build something like Mamba when for a couple million more you could have what's generally considered to be the best choice? That's just speculation, of course, because I would absolutely love to see what Chance Rides could do with a modern hypercoaster and clever use of terrain. They just have to wait for the right park to give them the opportunity. I could see a medium-sized park like Frontier City getting something like this. Basically a park that doesn't have a coaster over 150 feet yet. King's Dominion doesn't have a hypercoaster either. I mean, they do have Intimidator 305, but a lot of people consider that coaster to be too intense, so a Chance Rides Hyper might fit in well here. Six Flags St. Louis hasn't gotten a lot of love recently, so maybe put a Chance Rides Hyper in there. So I'm sure you can all see what I'm getting at. These hyper coasters would be a good fit for medium to large sized parks that might not be able to afford the high price tag associated with B&M or Intamin hypers. I'd be curious to hear where those of you watching think a Chance Rides Hyper could go since there are actually a lot of options. I know it's not going to happen, but this might be the time to resurrect that cancelled coaster at Michigan's Adventure. But again, you know Cedar Fair is not going to do that. And hey, didn't they say a few years ago that California's Great America would be getting a hyper somewhere down the line? It might not have an elevator lift, but maybe Chance Rides could have the right fit for this park. It might not be until years in the future, but I do believe that one day Chance Rides will get their time in the spotlight again with a brand new hyper coaster. Of course, where it could end up going is up to speculation, but that's part of the fun of it. Anyway, that's going to do it for me for this video. Feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments, and stay tuned for more coaster content here on Rampaging Rex Productions. See you all next time.